A difference amplifier with capacitor on positive terminal is shown here. Uh, and it's uh, in negative feedback loop, so everything properly connected. Um, now we want to see, even the capacitor located here, how does this work? And what is the gain and transfer function, or V out over Vn? OK. Um, so uh, the, the, the way it works is, if you have a cap here, if you are at DC or low enough frequency, you can assume cap in a steady state is like open circuit. So it's as if it's not there at low enough frequency or for DC. So cap is not there uh, in that scenario. So intuitively, you can say at DC, for a steady state analysis, you would have uh, you would have a current flowing this way through R2, through R1, through the V in voltage source, back to R1, and go to the output through R2. And there is no current flowing through the input terminal because uh, op-amp is ideal, input impedance for the input terminal is infinite, no current flowing through none of the input terminals. That's as simple as that, and uh, as you might have seen before, um, and I'll show it, uh, for such simple difference amplifier, the gain is simply negative R2 over R1, V out over Vn. Um, okay, so that's the scenario. Now imagine you are at super high frequency. If that is the case, then the cap in a steady state is short or is near short uh, impedance-wise. So this node for high enough frequency, because the impedance of cap, the steady state impedance of cap is 1 over j omega c, which omega is the radiant frequency. At high enough frequency, denominator is large enough. Uh, this, then the steady state impedance of cap goes to near zero or negligible compared to R2. This node is grounded or shorted to ground. Therefore, the current just simply flows through the cap, which is zero, uh, from through the cap impedance, and then R1, R1 back to R2. So effectively, you have the same setup, except that this R2 is out. So therefore, you expect, since R1 and R1 are there, but R2 is just one now, not two, therefore, the gain for, the, for that scenario is, should be dropped, maybe, uh, maybe half to be expect, compared to the scenario that when cap was assumed not there for the low enough or DC voltage scenario. Let's evaluate this sort of uh, intuition we have, uh, whether we can actually prove it. OK, so let's write the equations. Uh, assuming uh, op amp is a linear region of operation, then uh, you can say this node is Vx, the negative terminal. This node is also Vx. Basically, we're saying since uh, negative feedback is there, op amp is assumed operating in linear region not saturated, then the virtual short between the two input terminals is forced. That's why these two voltages are the same. So the, the way that the circuit looks like when you, uh, when you write it that way is just input voltage source. And then you have a resistor R1, as shown here. And then you have another resistor R1, as shown. And then both of them connect to a node, which is these two nodes, same node effectively, which is the voltage Vx. So you have a KDL here, a current defined, let's say, flowing this way, I, with this direction. If you write a voltage drop across the two resistors in this loop, you end up with this definition of current, that Vn, is equal to just as simple as 2R1I, which basically means I flowing with this definition of direction is just as simple as uh, Vn divided by 2R1. This is easy but important equation. So let's keep it as equation one. All right, now that I know this current that is flowing this way and actually goes then through R2 to the output, I know that current as a function of V in. So I can just write a volt, I cannot just subtract the voltage drop across R2 from Vx to get to V out. So as a result, I can say, okay, V out is simply then Vx minus the voltage drop across R2, which is R2 times that's this current. Okay. The problem is I don't know Vx, so, but I can write a KCL here on positive terminal that because that voltage is also Vx, and then I'm done. So let's have the current I, which is the, exactly the direction I assumed here, and let's also assume there is a current going through the cap, and there is another current going through this R2. So there are three currents involved in this KCL at, node, uh, at positive terminal. So writing a KCL at positive terminal gives you this. Uh, first, you have the current I, which we found in equation 1. So I have Vn divided by 2R1. That's for current I plus. 
the current through the cap, which is, of course, Vx, that's the voltage across the cap, divided by impedance of the cap, which is 1 over Cs. Um, and then the current through R2, which is Vx, the voltage across R2, divided by R2. And the sum of these three current should be zero, according to KCL. So now moving uh, the, the two components here that are function of Vx to the other side, I can find Vx as a function of Vn, or moving Vn to the other side. So as a result, I conclude that if you do that gain, you end up with Vx um, be equal to negative R2 over 2R1 times, um, let's say, times 1 over 1 plus R2 Cs times Vn. Okay, this is an important outcome, and I'm going to name it as equation number 2. I'm going to use this in what I got here, because the unknown is Vx. So let's use that in, in over here and figure out V out. So V out is now substituting for Vx using equation 2 is as simple as negative R2 over 2R1 uh, times 1 over 1 plus R2Cs times Vn. And then for I, I'm going to substitute from equation 1 here. So I get negative R2 over 2R1 times Vn. Negative R2 over 2R1 times Vn. Very nice. I can factor out negative R2 times uh, divide by 2R1 times V in from the both components here. So let's do that. Negative R2 over 2R1 times Vn. And then what remains inside is 1 over 1 plus R2Cs plus 1. And then when you simplify that, you get to 2 plus R2Cs divide by 1 plus R2Cs. Very, very nice. So this is the transfer function, H of S, that we were looking for. Uh, I mean, um, when V in is moved to the other side. So effectively, you can say, effectively, you can say um, V out over V in. Let me shift. Okay, V out over V in, which is my H of S or transfer function, is negative R2 over 2R1 times 2 plus R2Cs divided by 1 plus R2Cs. This is my transfer function. Okay, so that is, this is exactly confirming our intuition because uh, look at the, what we got. So at DC, S, which is J omega, omega is 0 at DC, and therefore what remains in numerator is 2, what remains in denominator is 1. So 2 cancel out with 2 here in denominator at DC. So what you get is at DC, S is 0, therefore gain is simply negative R2 over R1 at high enough frequency much larger than zero. Then you, uh, what you get is R2CS dominates numerator, R2CS dominate denominator. So effectively this whole thing becomes one and then the gain at high enough frequency is just negative R2 over two R1. Exactly what we expected. So the gain at high frequency is less than the gain at low frequency. And the reason for that is because actually we have here is showing that we have a pole in this system. So the pole, of course, uh, one there is one pole, which is when you set 1 plus R to Cs equal to 0, you get the pole to be uh, one over, negative 1 over R to C. And for 0, you have one 0 in this system. For 0, when you set the numerator to 0, you get uh, your... Uh, 0 at negative 2 over R2C. So obviously the position of 0 at twice frequency at the position of pole and if you if you then draw the body plot I mean sort of a very rough sketch uh, so y-axis is 20 log 
magnitude. Um, let me just clean this up. Okay, so 20 log magnitude, and x-axis is the omega, uh, maybe in log scale, and then you know that the pole happens first, at, and then zero comes at twice the frequency. So when you show it, then you see that first pole, so you have, uh, at DC you have a gain, which is this gain, so 20 log absolute value of this gain, and then you hit the pole at lower frequency. Since you're hitting the pole, there is a 20 dB per decade drop, um, and as soon as you approximately get to zero, it cancel out that 20 dB per decade drop, and that happens at a steady state at half of the gain. So the gain drop is half, which translate to, um, as you expect, so because the gain is dropped by half, you, you expect 6 dB drop in magnitude response. That's 20 log uh, 1 over 2. So this is also confirmed by the Bode plot. I hope that this is helpful in terms of understanding what this circuit is doing and what is the transfer function and what is the gain.